Hello friends, today I want to bring to discussion one problem that I'm seeing uh, almost in every project uh, that I work with for my entire career. And that's problem lying in the using SQL and object-oriented databases. Not in the databases itself, but in the way how people work with them every day. And what I'm seeing often um, that every project starts with something, yeah. For almost every IT project, uh, startup or thing like that, you need uh, some database to store your information. And most of us usually worked with uh, SQL databases or object-oriented databases. And when we come to choose what type of database to use in our project, of course, it will be or SQL or object-oriented database. And there are nothing bad in these databases or in the way to use it in, the, in your project. But there, there is one small catch. All these databases, uh, they give you possibility to work with them in almost any manner that you want. For example, you can use SQL databases and work with it as a k-value storage. And that's not a problem. It gives you a way to query your data in almost every way as you want to, to link different tables, uh, different data, different instances of your databases and things like that. And that's fine, that's cool features, but if you not plan all the stuff, before you start making your database, your data layers, you will get into serious problems uh, in near future. And I saw many pro projects that basically hit in that problem because they never plan how to correctly build their data, build models, uh, build queries to this data. And they just like doing some stuff and adding more and more and more and more complicated things to their schemas and databases. And, and at some point of time, they just can't replicate data, can't shard data normally, can't do fast queries and things like that. Not because database can do this, only because they don't have a plan for their data. And that's because when you basically not force it to do something, you not, in most cases, you will not do this. So for example, if you uh, make a program in Python, you, you need to use tabs because uh, tabs in Python, it's part of the uh, language syntax. You can't write code without it. In other languages, you basically can write a code in one line and that will be okay. And that's why I like Python, because its syntax forces you to write uh, normal codes that people can read. For example, if you, so in your previous life, use Perl, you will understand uh, the pain that uh, stay behind that scene. And same can be done with databases. You can force yourself to do planning of your data just by switching to another type of databases. For example, in my project, I like to use AVS, DynamoDB, or Cassandra. First of all, because that's reliable databases that can handle a pretty enormous amount of data without any problems. Uh, most things working out of the box. You don't need to think how you will replicate, share this data. I mean, you will. You need to think about that, but only in the way of your data layer, not in the way of technically how to do that. And that's a really cool stuff. But the main thing is that you can't use these databases without making a data plan they will just not work at all. You just write a few queries and stop on that. Uh, because that's how this database is built and work. 
you need to carefully plan what you will do, how you will query your data and things like that. And that's force you to do this before you came to basically build in a scheme, schema for your database. Um, on the other hand, if you will use, for example, PostgreSQL, you can build any schema and it will work just because database will give you to do that. But that doesn't mean that schema that you built is totally okay, if fine, uh, for your project uh, even in near future. And that's why I always try to switch to some type of databases that force you to do things correctly. Another thing is that uh, this type of idea of microservices that stand behind such databases because, for example, in many projects you have just one or maybe only two databases like PostgreSQL and you store everything there. No separation, no separation by access or like uh, separating by <coughs> type of data that you store by the server, for example, based on ser which service accesses data. And that's basically big idea of microservices uh, because it doesn't work like that. Idea of microservices, for example, is to build uh, services that in most cases not linked with each other. Of course there are some situations when you need to cross link between service but idea is to build services in the way that they communicate only through the internal protocol and no other relation uh, should be there. And in such way you basically build a database table or few tables for each service. And it's very handy to use, for example, AWS DynamoDB because if you separate in your data by services, you don't need to store like ton of different models and uh, ways and building ways how to link them in one query. You just have really pretty simple stuff like get user, save user, I don't know, get some data, save some data. You don't have like query with 20 joins that need to join all the tables on, on your plate. And in such way, DynamoDB even more better choice because you don't need all this SQL uh, stuff uh, in your work at all. The simpler language you can use, the better. And this make you build a really high load uh, infrastructure, high load projects that can handle a lot of data, a lot of user requests. And it will be really simple. Because when you have small services, it's much simpler to handle them. Uh, I mean, there is, of course, uh, additional overhead with orchestration. But when you come to one service, it's very simple to change something, to update it. To understand what's happening there, uh, to work with this data, then uh, if you have, for example, services and one big database that have to too many links between all the type of data types and other stuff, and you can't change anything because if you change one small thing in one place, it will like in Cascade will change different things in different tables and different relations, queries and stuff like that and it will take too much time to make these changes because you will need to check all the stuff around your code and that's a really big amount of job. When you work with microservices and small databases with simple query language, you don't need all this stuff. You change it fast your deployment fast, your updates to user fast. The faster you go to the market and to your user, the better for the business. That's how our world works. So this gives additional, uh, like, better ways to uh, handle your work and your data in your project because in other way, 
in many services, uh, sorry, uh, in many projects that I work with uh, for this 25 years, I saw like the typical deployment of some feature. It's like you build a feature and then around two, three weeks, it taken to check all the stuff that you may change. Uh, to run this through all your QAs, uh, additional engineers who review that, and then deploy to the production. Two, three weeks for one small change. When you work with microservices with small, simple databases like DynamoDB, they simple not in the way how to use that, they simple in the amount of features that you can use. Um, for example, just like uh, Go language uh, with comparing with Python, for example. And that's why I like Go language uh, because it's very small. And uh, if we're talking about uh, syn uh, commands, uh, syntax commands, and it doesn't give you ability to make one solution in 1000 different ways. It gives you the way to build your solution in the correct way as much as possible with using as, le as least as possible different ways and features. And that's very good because it makes code simpler, uh, code base uh, much smaller, and it's better to work with such code in years of uh, your project. And for example, that's why I'm not very like Rust because it's powerful language, but on the other hand, it's the same basically as C or C++. Um, it gives you the way to do things in very different ways. And that's the way when you can give a very big amount of different problems, of course. So the same as uh, using uh, like small databases or databases with a big amount of features and functionality. So my point of view here is that um, we should build system that not setting some rules on how we should do some stuff with that, how we should deploy, how we should build code, write code and things like that. We need to build system that force you like in more positive way, I mean, to choose the correct way of doing things. For example, like IVS DynamoDB. You can't build the database just from scratch without planning anything. You need to plan and you understand that and you do that. And then you get a good working project. In SQL, you don't need to do this. So you don't, you didn't do that and you get a pretty creepy project in the result. And this is two ways how you can do. And the first way is much simpler because you don't need the rules. You don't need to always check if what people are doing. You always know, always know that if something is working, then it built correctly. Because in other way, it will not work. And that's my point of view of building architecture and infrastructure of any project. Because uh, checking rules, especially in big project with big amount of developers, managers, staff, uh, that's a huge ton of work. And you need to hire more and more and more managers, engineers to check all the stuff that it's built correctly better to build systems that where you don't need to check it because if it works then it built correctly it's some sort of uh writing code through the mathematical proof uh, proving it uh, maybe you know there are some languages that give you ability to write and test some algorithm for example if you want to test raft algorithm there is a mathematical proof of that algorithm that it works and this gives you 100% uh, sure that everything's fine. You don't need to write tests like uh, we're doing every day. 
you just have a proof and that's it you don't need anything more and building systems that force you to do correct thing it's some sort of this mathematical proving uh, because you basically have this of course it's not the same but it nearly the same you make things worked only in the way if they build a core club. Uh, so please, if you have some ideas or comments on that, um, just comment below and don't forget to like, subscribe, of course. And if you have love to my few friends like this one, please donate because we have 200 and even more uh, several ill animals in our shelters that need everyday medical support and that's cost us pretty big amount of money every day so we need some donation to make this thing work hope you liked this video so i will make more bye guys